All right, let's talk about Henry's law. Henry's law is all about solubility. And what he found is that there's this direct proportionality between the solubility of a gas. So we're talking gases specifically and that it's directly proportional to this partial pressure of a gas over a solution, which kind of makes sense because if we picture a vessel here, so here's our beaker, let's say with our liquid in it, then we know that our liquid particles are gonna be moving around. That's pretty good. Look at them go. And that um, some of these particles then are going to leave and other particles here at the surface are going to be kind of interchanging, interfacing. They're going to get sucked back in. Some of the particles leaving, some of the particles coming back. So right at the surface, there's this layer of gas particles as we're kind of going into the open air. And that exerts a force. It exerts a pressure on the surface of the liquid, especially if we have a closed system, right? And that's that um, partial pressure of a gas over the surface of the liquid. So that's our P. Now, the solubility of the gas, then, how soluble this gas is into a solution, if we're talking about kind of a solute dissolved into a solvent, I always like to think of carbon dioxide when I'm thinking about dissolved gases, because I think that we think about like sparkling water and soda, so that it's dissolved CO2 in some sort of solvent. So if we have these gas particles in here, the greater the pressure over my surface of the liquid, the greater the solubility of my gas, right? Because there's this physical barrier that is pushing down and keeping those gas particles into the solution. So Henry's law shows this proportionality between them. And because it's directly proportional, that means that as one thing goes up, so as the pressure goes up, the solubility goes up kind of like other gas laws that we've talked about, things like Charles law, for example, which is a direct relationship between volume and temperature of a gas. We said that the ratio of those things is um, equal to, so if I take a solubility at some sort of given condition, let's just call it one, the solubility and the partial pressure at whatever stage one is gonna be equal to a constant. And so that constant is Henry's law constant. And this is for individual liquids. So that Henry's law constant is for um, different liquids. It's unique to a substance. Let's call it liquid. And then it has to be at a particular temperature because we know that the solubility of a gas is gonna be impacted by the temperature too. So, so this is gonna be at some sort of given T, usually 25 degrees Celsius, um, but it can be at whatever given T you can look up a constant for. So you might have a whole list of constants depending on the different conditions that you're given. And then our P here, of course, is our partial pressure. And that can have any number of units, depending on the unit of the constant, depending on the units that you are measuring, all the things. And then the uh, solubility, which can also have a number of different units. So it kind of depends. It tends to be mass of the solute per volume of solvent. So solubility is often in grams per liter but it doesn't have to be. And we'll talk about an example in which it is not a mass, but instead it's moles in our second example today. But in general, it's grams per liter or like grams per milliliter, like a density, or you can have, you know, if it's a smaller quantity, you get a milligrams per liter, which of course is PPM, parts per million. So your solubility can have a number of different factors. Now, because this ratio is equal to a constant, then if I change something about it, if I change the pressure somehow, so I put it in a different environment, or I change something about it, then um, my solubility will change too. So we can set these things equal to each other. So I'd have a, an S2 over P2 is equal to that same constant because it goes up in a directly proportional way. Then we could kind of write this thing as S1 over P1 is equal to S2 over P2. So it kind of depends on the types of questions um, that it's asking. What is it asking for? Is it asking for this constant? Is it asking you to use this constant for something? Is it asking you to find one of these pieces? Um, you can use it for any and all of those things. So let's look at one where it's using the 
this relationship, this direct proportionality here, where we can set the ratios equal to each other. So if we have a liter of water at 25 degrees Celsius, um, this says that it dissolves 0 0.0404 grams of oxygen when I have a partial pressure of one atmosphere, which is just kind of sea level, normal atmospheric pressure. So it wants to know a new solubility of oxygen in that water when we've increased or decreased, we're in different units here, to 159 millimeters of mercury. So it looks like we're going to have to do a conversion. We'll see what's going on if my pressure is increasing or decreasing, and then kind of go from there. So um, first things first, we're given a solubility. We're given this many grams in one liter. So that's my solubility of oxygen in water. I'm given an initial pressure, which is my one atmosphere. I'm given a second pressure, which is my 159 millimeters of mercury, which we decided that we're going to have to convert. We'll stick with atmospheres because that's kind of the friendlier one. And it asks for the new solubility. So what happens when I change that pressure? OK, let's look up this relationship. So millimeters of mercury to atmospheres looks like there are 760 millimeters of mercury for every one atmosphere. So when I run that number, I end up with 0 0.209 atmospheres. So my partial pressure is going down. So I've changed the pressure so that it is decreasing, right? So I'm going from 1 to 0 0.2. So what am I expecting is going to happen? to my solubility. Well, I would expect that it's going to go down, right? I'm decreasing the pressure over the surface. That's going to allow for more gas particles to leave. So that's kind of what we're going to solve for. Down by how much is really, that's the question. So if we do our um, S1 over P1, plus S2 over P2, and again, because it's a direct proportionality, you can ha have these ratios however you want. Since we're solving for this guy, I like to rearrange the variables first. So if I solve for S2, then it's equal to S1 P2 over P1. And then now that I'm in all the same units here, I have my solubility grams per liter times my P2, which is that 0 0.209 atmospheres over my P1, which is the 1. So if I'm analyzing my units here, my atmospheres are going to divide out and leave me with an answer in grams per liter, which is good because that's going to be a solubility, and that's what I'm solving for. And I got 8.44 times 10 to the negative third grams of my O2 per one liter of water. All right, once you have a solubility, you can use this in a number of different ways. You could figure out how much is soluble in different amounts. So this is in one liter of water, but what if it was 50 milliliters of water, then how many grams of oxygen could I get in there? And you can play around with the values like that too. So that's another way to use these types of relationships. But at its most fundamental, this is what we're doing here with Henry's Law. So the solubility and the partial pressure directly related to each other. Because of this direct proportionality, we can set up this equality, which means that we can solve problems that look like this. Now, another way that we can write Henry's Law has to do with the molar solubility. So that's just a molarity. which we know is the number of moles per liter of solution. So how many moles can I pack into that liter of solution? But if we think of that molarity in terms of a maximum concentration, so if I'm putting the maximum number of moles in that solution, so I'm right at that saturation point, just about to get to the super saturation point, then that's the molarity we're talking about here. And then we can also use this this is, of course, Henry's constant, same one that we just talked about with the relationship between solubility and partial pressure. And then this is my partial pressure of my gas. OK, so we can use this version of Henry's law, which again, same sort of thing. It's just about a different type of um, 
solubility here because it's still the same. It's still an S over a P, but we're talking about molar concentration, molar solubility. Yeah. So let's take carbon dioxide, like in my carbonated sodas or my sparkling water. I'm given a Henry's Law constant that looks like this. So note my units here are moles per liter atmosphere. If I have this partial pressure uh, in one liter of 2.4 atmospheres, at 25 degrees Celsius, what's the maximum molar concentration that I get for this? So I'm solving for M. I'm given my Henry's Law constant. I'm given a partial pressure here. And because my units align, I have atmospheres in both, then it's just a plug and chug operation. So I can just put in my 3.4 times 10 to the negative 2 moles per liter atmosphere and multiply that by my pressure, my 2.4 atmospheres. And then if I'm analyzing my units, my atmospheres will divide out, which will give me moles per liter. So that'll give me that maximum molar concentration or molarity as we're thinking about it. So that concentration at its maximum limit at its saturation point. And I end up with um, 8.16 times 10 to the negative 2 moles of CO2 per 1 liter. Um, looks like sig fig wise, we're probably going to have to round this thing. So we'd go 8.2 times 10 to the negative 2. And again, we're talking about molarity, but we are talking about molar concentration as well. So sometimes it's nice to be able to say moles per liter and really separate it out like that so that we're really showing that that's what it is. When we put the big M at the end, then it's easy to kind of lose track of what we were solving for. But we, we were finding is what is the maximum amount of this gas, the maximum number of moles of my carbon dioxide that I can fit into this one liter soda bottle. All right, so that's another form of Henry's Law. Again, this direct proportionality between the solubility of that gas and um, and that partial pressure, which is pretty intuitive and really is built from the gas law relationships that we see. And if you have any questions on this, don't hesitate to reach out. Otherwise, I'll talk to you again soon.